Hey Nerf Herders, welcome to another episode of Certain Point of View. We are doing our Star Wars show. We have abandoned the trappings of doing a general nerd show and sort of the lack of focus of us shotgunning all over the nerd galaxy. And we're going to st stick with Star Wars. We're going to snipe our way through <laughs> <laughs> Star War the Star Wars universe and nerddom. Sure, we may talk about some other nerd stuff every now and then in bonus episodes, but for the mo for week to week, we're going to be a Star Wars show. You can check out this show, among other shows that are part of Certain Point of View, on our website, certainpov.com. We've got another pass with Case Aiken where he revisits movies that may be still good, but just need a little tweak here and there, or at least something that might be an interesting tweak, even if it is a really good movie. Uh, we also have fun and games with Matt and Jeff as they explore the the uni the the, the ever expanding universe of video games, and then of course also led by our very own Case Aiken and featuring both of us here and a couple other friends as well. We have got. Uh, the Scruffy Nerf Herders, a Star Wars D20 story, which is exactly that, a D20 D&D style adventure in the Star Wars universe full of irreverent shenanigans. Irreverent shenanigans is absolutely perfect name for that. <laughs> this is the most relaxed intro I've ever heard you give. I know, right? That's so weird. But it it's feels smooth. Weird. Like we we are we're we're in, we're in my backyard again. Yeah. And it's nighttime. My you know my backyard lights are on. We've this had is a, perfect. It's, the temperature is perfect. We're just like rocking we're, in, yeah, the, we're little, little patio in the little patio furniture, just rocking out, just sitting outside. This is the most relaxed we will ever be yeah. about this podcast. Because usually I have to like hype myself up a little bit mm -hmm. to do the intros. Yeah, to get and that today energy. you were just like, hey, Yay. <laughs> smooth jazz, <laughs> late nights with Lando. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a show I'd listen to on the radio. You're welcome to hang out with us in the heavens. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'd be fantastic, right? I kind of want to hear that show. I kind of like that idea. The idea for that show. I've been. I've thrown on a little bit of like a, some Spotify late night jazz playlist yeah. just to relax. Just to... It's been so soothing. Like yeah. I've been needing that more and more. Just like Jenny and I did that uh, a week ago. We threw. I threw on some some piano jazz. And we just sat out here on the, on the same furniture and yeah. just just chilled and rocked and just talked to each other and just you know like oh, just just decompress. I might like, make a habit of that at the new place at yeah. the house. Just like because good you know. luck with like living with five guys being able to do that. Oh. Like, there's always going to be some sort of stupid going stupid on. Stupid thing going on. Yep. You know what? Those guys are a little bit better than some previous roommate situations. Looking at you, J. Mike. Uh, no, not that one. <laughs> oh. he, that, that one's good. I'm talking about my good friend David Adams, oh, David who Adams, would often yeah. moon me as I walked in at five in the morning after my overnight job <laughs> as he was on his way to teach kids, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, these teachers don't get paid enough. <laughs> I always say. So, yep. Yeah, so that that was – I'm glad I gave both his first and last name. I, if I had a social security number, I'd throw it out there as well. Uh, <laughs> he teaches at. You're right. <laughs> But no, uh, don't. We're, we're today we're doing uh, a Star Wars episode, of course. But with us moving to a Star Wars episode, we will talk some Star Wars news from time to time as it comes out. Star Wars rumors. We'll discuss a little bit of that, but we'll also focus in a little bit more on certain topics and characters and themes sometimes, or concepts or ideas. You know, back when we first launched this uh, the series, we we had an episode dedicated entirely to our the great lifelong Ewok debate. Our, our bitter debate. This is the one thing that you and I will never, <laughs> never come to terms no. on. We, Ewoks, yeah. There will always be an... A, a best and uneasy The noblest truth. of warriors. <laughs> the <laughs> dumbest of, <laughs> of ideas. <laughs> the most ridiculous. <laughs> and, 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 that, and this is this is where... They're the Viet Cong, sir. <laughs> this is where the battle line has been that, drawn. Those, I wasn't necessarily saying the Viet Cong were the noblest of warriors, <clears> but... <laughs> yeah, no, no. We have it on tape. You heard it, people. <laughs> Addy is a, a, a clear America hater. <laughs> uh, I mean, they're they're like the American rebels, like you know, fighting the the British in the swamps of South and North Carolina. <laughs> As Cornwallis was advancing to pincer uh, uh, Washington in Virginia, so yeah. there you go. Okay. I got some history to throw in there. Yeah, you're just making stuff up. Swamp now. Fox, man. Swamp Fox. <laughs> <laughs> you're just you're just naming uh, movies that you've seen with. Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, 
Oh, who's the guy you like? The actor. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. Pa- yeah, the Patriot. <laughs> hey, man, he was based on like four actual characters like <laughs> blended together. Come on, man. I know, I know a little bit of history. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> but before okay. I was into Star Wars and comics, I was into history. Like no, that. I get it. I get it. I was a history major. I'm with you. I, I, I get you, which is why I think the Ewoks are dumb. Because <laughs> based on history, they right. should have lost. Well, today's not a, today is not a, <laughs> um, an Ewok debate episode. Today is... It may be. <laughs> you kind of got me riled up. I know, right? <laughs> Someone's going to throw a chair at each other. <laughs> uh, but no, today's episode is actually going to be uh, going into Darth Maul. If you don't know by now, spoilers, 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 Darth Maul has an appearance in Solo, A Star Wars Story. So it's a cameo. It's uh, you brief. Know, yeah. If if you're aware Doesn't of something. really matter. Yeah, it's not too consequential unless they decide to use it a little bit more in some upcoming movies. But regardless, uh, it's not that big of a spoiler if you consider... It wasn't big enough spoiler that it was spoiled for me before I saw the movie, and it, it, and I didn't mind it. Yeah, but th- that it was a cool reveal when it happened. But regardless, uh, this is a character that's had an interesting path. Yeah. <laughs> because there's been some heavy retcons to bring him back. Yes, there have. But... He has become one of Star Wars' best, maybe, redeemed characters, not thematically necessarily, but in terms of being able to like throw some heavy retcons and bring him back from the dead. Yeah. They've used his character in some really interesting ways, particularly Dave Filoni in the extended universe, in Clone Wars, and in Rebels, has used the character in some amazing ways. So we're going to kind of go back, reflect, and kind of trace his journey. Uh, today, you got a chance to catch up on the, the other existing... Uh, um, Darth canon. Maul, yeah, canon that is existing in. There is a, uh, I believe, last yep. year, 2017, there was yep. uh, a comic <clears throat> series. I believe Charles Soule wrote it. I don't remember. Um, Charles Soule, uh, who I think he did, I think he recently did a run on Daredevil. He also is, I believe he's, oh, he was the guy who did the Magneto series from a couple years back that we that really we liked. That we really liked, yeah. Yeah, so, and he was also the guy responsible, if I remember, um, he, I believe he. Oh, I believe he handled the Death of Wolverine arc as well, okay. and some of the stuff leading up to that and leading out of it as well. Uh, so he's he's one. Of, he's honestly a, a writer that I actually personally like a lot. Uh, but then we also have a uh, another comic series that actually was published uh, before the the Disney buyout of Lucasfilm called Darth Maul, Son of Dathomir. That went well. It, I guess it was it was actually at the time. Right. Of the Disney buyout, because when Clone Wars wrapped up, uh, it was it was cut short because of the Disney buyout. Uh, so there were some episodes that were already produced or close to produced. There's some that are still in animatic stage, and then there were plenty of scripts. Some of those scripts were turned into the Dark Disciple novel with Asajj Ventress, um, and then some of these episodes were also turned into this this uh, four part comic series, Son of Dathomir, to wrap up some major plot. Uh, or at least push forward some of that plot. It doesn't necessarily wrap it up, but um, it does continue the story that Darth Maul had in the Clone Wars. But let's start. So this is a character that you know was uh, was on a lot of promotion for the Phantom Menace, uh, and he had two lines of dialogue, <laughs> <laughs> and not even from the actor, <laughs> right? <laughs> Dubbed it in. <clears throat> yeah, um, I think it was Peter Serafinowicz who voiced him, and it yeah. was Ray Park who did who was. Which is hilarious. Physically. Like, Ray Park, fine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they felt the need. I guess, he, I, you he know what? two lines. How bad can you screw that up? I don't think, well, I think, <laughs> it's funny because, you know, obviously Vader is sort of a similar situation, but Vader doesn't have, Vader has a mask. So that's right. easier to, to to make work that way. But uh, it's fun. But, you know, I don't know if Ray Park's voice has necessarily the same gravity that, like Peter Serafinowicz is, has a much deeper voice than they it wanted. It was too long. It was. I know they could have and, and, digitally and was, done something if they really was, wanted to. Yeah, I mean, and it, and it was the, yes, my master, and a growl, and yeah, yeah. I mean, they could have got something out of him. Yeah. I'm sure. At last, we will have our revenge on the, on the Jedi. Yeah, like when he says that, like yeah. I, it's not like such an intimidating voice that anybody couldn't do that. That's I true. Mean, <laughs> I, I I never understood why they did that, but you know I. There's things in movies I don't understand. Well, and there's a lot in those movies in particular. That I don't understand. Yeah. So uh, as as 
one of the most popular scenes, obviously. You know, we, we got some really, so we got a couple cool moments with Maul where, you know, when he first attacks uh, Qui Gon yeah, as Tatooine. they're uh, yeah as they're escaping Tatooine, and then of course the big fight on Naboo on the- in Theed mm-hmm. uh, as they're going through the the power generator rooms right, and, with all the force fields. Yes, and, and going from platform to platform as he fights mm-hmm. Qui Gon and Obi Wan kills Qui Gon. And, of course, Obi-Wan almost dies, but even though he doesn't have the high ground, he still cuts Darth Maul in half, and he <laughs> falls down a reactor shaft, which is pretty much dead in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, you would expect dead. Yes. And, and, and everybody did, and rightfully so. Like, yeah. I mean, he's cut in half. Right. <laughs> I mean, it was, uh, short, cauterized, <laughs> but he's still cut he's still in cut half. half. <laughs> and falls a great length to, yeah. to what you expect to be his death. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, you know, but there was enough of a backlash within the fan community of like we really thought this was a cool, would have been a cool character. Yeah, that they, it, de- they decided to do something else with him. In some ways, it's considered a bright spot of the pre prequels. Like you know, people do like the that that lightsaber fight a lot. You the know, the dual bladed lightsaber was yeah. something we've never seen before. Yeah. sure. There's a lot of moments in that fight that don't make a lot of sense. Uh, there's <laughs> a know? lot of misses where people like <laughs> like really, Qui Gon, you're that bad. Obi Wan yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, uh, you know, Sith are their specialty. So, <laughs> are their speciality? Yes, their speciality. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, Duel of the Fates really helps. Duel that, of the though. Fates really helps that. Editing helps that, and uh, not seeing it recently helps it as well. <laughs> um, it, there, there, there's a lot to like. That is a bright spot. Like, uh, it's cool seeing a Sith. In the double plated lightsaber. In the double plated lightsaber, and 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 Maul just looks so badass. He with does. Those ta- he's red and black with the ta- tattoos. He's got this awesome black outfit, and he's got the horns. Yeah, like he just looks like you would hope a Sith would look, right? Yeah. Like instead of a shriveled old grape like Sidious, <laughs> right? Or you know whatever they did to Vader yeah. <laughs> there for a while. <laughs> um, we wanted to see a Sith in his prime be a badass with a lightsaber and, and kick Jedi ass, yeah. and, and Maul does that for, yeah. for a good bit of that movie. He's a really intimidating force. Yeah. Um, like, my, we, we talk a lot about, like, how great Sidious is as a Sith Lord, but he's not really intimidating. I don't know that force lightning would freak me. Force out. lightning, yeah. I mean, but that that's and really his skills all we with see. the lightsaber. Are pretty but we didn't nasty. see that until we that's didn't see that later until yeah. Clone Wars. Yeah. Well, we got a bit of it in at well, the Jedi. The Sith. Yeah, and he's throwing. He's really just throwing stuff. They're just yeah. throwing things at each other for. No, a while. he kills. Uh, uh, oh right, he yeah. does that little corkscrew spin. Yeah, thing. I he know. kills just... like four Jedi in a row. Yeah. <sighs> I know, I know. It's not, it's not their best moment. <clears throat> Sidious isn't intimidating, okay? <laughs> I don't care what you say. All right. He's not intimidating. Like, when you see the old man pull out the lightsaber, you're like, oh, really? Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, and I, But I will give it to Dooku, even though he's old as hell. Christopher Lee has a lot. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Christopher Lee, Lee is dead, and I still wouldn't mess with that man. <laughs> <laughs> Especially this, as you know, he was like a British spy. He was poisoned. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was a badass. Yeah. He was a legit badass. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't mess with that guy. As amazing as Ian McDermott is as, as Palpatine. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. But I, he, he doesn't, like, when you, just just on looks alone, you look at him and He's your go, grandpa. Yeah, you're like, uh, okay. Yeah. Like, don't have, like, don't break a hip while we're doing this, okay? <laughs> like, I don't want to hurt you. Um, whereas Maul, like, is young, is strong, you know, he's acrobatic, yeah. and he just yeah, looks he's doing like flips a, and... he's doing, but yeah, he's doing flips, he's a badass, he's got a double-bladed lightsaber, he just looks cool as hell, yeah. like, we, re- I really wanted more out of him in that, in that prequel, and thank God we did get more of him, because well, his story really is, it, it is fantastic, it's a little, you have to kind of, accept some of the leaps, yeah, yeah, you gotta expect some real big leaps in the beginning of how they bring him back, yeah. But then after that, like they, once he's established, it's like okay, and he's back. Let's let's move forward. Well, I remember our when we first because we watched the Clone Wars pretty yeah. much week in and week out as yeah. they were coming on live. Like we we watched from Episode One. Yeah, you know we watched from the 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 movie. Yep. You know, um, and uh, I remember when we first saw like that reveal because it was at the end of a season when they revealed you know that 
Darth Maul was sort of there in the ether, and you know the first thought is that oh his spirit is still somehow right. there. Like a sport of a Force Ghost kind of an idea. Right. So are we going to get an evil Force Ghost? That we didn't quite get that because we got him in the in the flesh. Back. Flesh and blood. Now of course a lot of that is also with we we got the uh, some bigger lore of other. Uh, Force users, uh-huh. specifically a dark side Force user, and that is the Night Sisters, yep. and the way they also work with the Zabrax and kind of enslaved the Zabrax as well. But that Mother Talzin, who was the leader of the Night Sisters and a competitor with uh, Sidious, yeah. actually uh, kind of uh, brought one of, I guess, Maul's brothers, one of his, one of his fellow Zabrax, uh, Savage Opress, brought his him brother, into yeah. yeah, brought him into the picture and. Um, you know they they were they were kind of at odds obviously with Sidious but also with Dooku, uh, but they they sent out uh, Savage to bring Maul back, back from the yeah. dead, and he was found on a dump, uh, in a dump I guess I guess apparently that reactor went to some trash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess he ended in a trash compactor. I don't know. I don't, it wasn't a trash compactor because he would be dead. He would be dead. <laughs> But yeah, and they had somehow, I don't remember the details, but they had somehow attached like this spider mechanical, well, mechanical so spider his, body to it, him, right? With the dark side of the force, <clears throat> he sort of fashioned these like... Right. Le- like he he willed brought, it to himself. Yeah, he willed this like trash to himself to build trash legs, basically. Yeah. Uh, and he was like complete agony and pain, completely mad, like couldn't, I like just so completely insane he couldn't even identify he was ranting and raving total mess uh he was being used by this this snake creature as sort of his muscle right uh to kind of like pos- like take fine valuables in in this, in this dump world essentially uh but yeah savage brought him back and helped they did a couple rituals on him and they brought his sanity back uh, Sort of back because he's still he's still <laughs> he was off. never he was never he never really truly had it together. <laughs> yeah, but he was definitely a little bit more. He now he w- we were able to see calculating Maul. Yeah, you know we were able to see a Maul who was so hell bent on revenge against Obi Wan that he becomes this force in the middle of the Clone Wars that just wreaks havoc not in, only in the underworld but uh, against both the Separatists and the Republic. Yeah. So, which is such becomes a becomes a legit third party in that war, right? He white like he takes over the Hut Cartel, yeah. the Pikes. Uh, I think the there was Mandalore. a couple, yeah, Mandalore. You know, Death Watch uh, specifically. Uh-huh. He dethrones their their queen, and he's the one who originally has the dark saber. That's right. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot that. Right. Well, he doesn't originally have the dark. Originally, saber. but he does. Get Death it. Watch uh, has it, but yeah, he takes he it. He takes from it from them. them, and that's how yeah. he runs it. He yeah. wins it from uh, from their leader, yeah. and then he also kills uh, Obi Wan's love. Yep. Sabine. Uh, yep. Sabine? Not Sabine. Yeah. Uh, was it Sabine? It is a similar name. Something like that. I can't remember. Crap. Yeah, I feel we're such terrible Star Wars fans. We really are. This is going to be a. This is. A, here, here's a drinking game for you. Yeah. How long. How can many you, names can we miss? How many names can we miss? And how long can we get into the episode before we miss one? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so, so we see. We see. Uh, we see we see Maul come back in a really big way, and that's where they left him off in the Clone Wars. So it was nice to see some wrap up. To... No, 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 uh, uh-uh. uh, no. Oh, cause... that's right. Sidious comes <clears throat> back. Sidious kills comes back Savage. and kills Savage Press and and kind of dethrone and, and, and beats the crap out of uh, Maul, which is it's, Maul. it was a, amazing. That is, scene. That's where you really see like, oh yeah, like this old guy can go. Right. You know. Right. Uh, <laughs> Because they knew he was coming, and he just he just destroys the both of them together, and is yeah. laughing and cackling like a crazy person the whole time. Like right. that's where you really see uh, Sidious as the as a dark lord, as a Sith yeah. dark lord. Like, and in the Clone Wars, if you have not watched Filoni's Clone Wars, and it's also worth checking out the Tarkovsky uh, Clone Wars as well, fun series as well. But man, the Filoni series, Filoni it's Lucas, so uh, good. is yeah, it, it is amazing, <laughs> and you really do get a better sense of what Sidious was able to do and how he works in the background and all these different plots that he has. Gives going. you much more respect for that character. Exactly. exactly. You know, like, you know, pe- people talk about it like, oh, God, you know, we didn't get anything out of Snoke. We didn't, we kind of had the same thing with Palpatine yeah. until the Filoni series. Yeah. Really, really colored in that character and made him a menace. Yeah, because that, the, or the Phantom Menace. Is nah. like, ah. So. Uh, <laughs> that we got right. Yeah. <laughs> you count on us for a line like that every now and then. 
then. Um, but yeah, I, I, yeah, I totally agree with you because it, if anything, the prequels make the Jedi look especially stupid. And not that that's helped too much because like the dark side is down the hall and they're not really able to see, you know, <laughs> see him. But uh, it, it, it does, it does help see just like the machinations of of uh, Sidious and the Darth Maul on the Son of Dathomir series. It takes that to another level as well. It really does. Seeing competitors for him as well. Yeah, having uh, the Night Sisters and and, and the the head witch of the Night Sisters like being the main competitor and seeking revenge against Sidious and using Maul as sort of a pawn to 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 lure Sidious out and Sidious using Maul as a pawn to lure her out. Yeah, and and they're both like competing against each other and using their it's it's like a game of chess where they're they're literally they're they're using Maul as a piece and they're using Dooku as a piece and they're using Grievous as a piece and they're using uh, Death Watch as a piece and they're using the Underworld as a piece and they're all you know and and what what's amazing about it is in the end really you realize that like no Sidious is using all of those pieces yeah <laughs> she just thought she was using pieces right. and Sidious was like no 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 this is exactly what I needed to have happen yeah. And uh, basically, it, it, what ends up happening is um, Maul and what, what is her name? I can Mother Towson. M- Mother Towson are working together to try and get rid of uh, of Sidious. So um, Sidious sends Grievous and Dooku after Maul to kind of to to, to to flush him out, basically, but tells them. Don't kill him. Just weaken his power base because what he's going to do is he's going to then run to Mother Towson, and then that's who we really want to get. Right. That's that's the goal. So, and it's brilliantly told because you think that's what's going on, right? And they do just that, and then you see Mother Towson tell Maul, "Hey, this is what Sidious is going to do, but we're going to lure them into a trap." And you go, "Oh, oh, oh okay, interesting." And it works. Like the trap works. They end up capturing. Dooku and Grievous yeah. and you're like oh she's got the upper hand on Sidious and like Dooku and and Grievous don't seem troubled by this in the least right which is a little unsettling but they don't make a big deal about it but like if you're if you're paying attention and reading it you're like like they should be a little more nervous about what's going on right. because in theory like Sidious's plan isn't going very well so <clears throat> Maul uh, captures Grievous and 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 says, "Put him in, put him in lockup, guard him. I want to try. I want to talk to Dooku and try to convert him." And Dooku's, "All right, well, what do you got? Like, what are you, what are we doing here?" And in the meantime, Sidious is launching this attack on Maul's forces all over the place, and and, and then coming to rescue Dooku and Grievous. And so Dooku is basically like just killing time, waiting for Sidious to show up. And Maul is like going through all these machinations of like you know we're gonna we're gonna work together and we can overthrow this old man and and his typical Maul stuff and mm-hmm. and Sith stuff that you expect, and then City shows up, and uh, and they they're using they uh, eventually what happens is, Dooku says no I'm not going to to help you I'm not going to work with you, and uh, so they use him as like a life sacrifice to bring back. Mother, mother Towson, mother Towson, because she is in the Nether or something like right. that, and she needs she needs a blood sacrifice basically to get her body back. Right. So they're able to successfully do that. They don't quite kill Dooku in the process when Sidious shows up, but she uh, overtakes his body, and he she's fighting uh, Sidious, and Sidious is like, "This is ridiculous. You may have his body, but you don't have his skills and his mind. Yeah. Like I am going to kick." your ass and so she is able to manifest her her body back and and let's go of dooku and then like sidious <laughs> just unleashes hell on her and she's like using this force field to protect herself and and uh and uh maul and basically realizes uh this was a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> and so in the meantime like all of maul's forces that he has built up are under attack and he's not responding because he's tied up with this and so right. they're like well screw this guy yeah, they then. just get scattered yeah and so yeah. It really what ends up happening is all of maul's forces get defeated and yeah. scattered and and leave him yeah. and they kill his oh it's also revealed that this is the biggest reveal this is the big the biggest spoiler that came out of the sons of dathomir 
thing is that Maul wasn't a gift from Mother Talzin to Sidious. Uh, Maul was her son. And when Sidious, uh, Sidious and her were working together, like he was sharing dark side secrets with her and she was sharing, you know, uh, night sister secrets with him. And when he saw Maul and felt the presence of the dark side in him, he just snagged him and, and jetted and just left and was like, yoink, got him. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Which is why she has this like super hatred for him because she stole his son. Right. Or her son. Yeah. He stole her son. Yes. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so like we find this out right before, like, basically you find this out right before he kills her. As as she like force pushes Maul away to to flee and in, flee into the yeah. galaxy, yeah, and that's where they leave it of like, yeah. well, she's dead. Sidious has just gotten everything he wants. He's wiped out all of Maul's forces, right, and and taken away his seat of power and sent him into hiding yet again, right, and. And, but um, it looks like he still has – because this would be the – like, I mean, I'm sure there's definitely space in between here and Solo. But, you know, it looks he like – He has some forces left. Yeah, he's able to have some forces left. He's still able to sort of rebuild a little bit of a criminal empire. He has Crimson Dawn yes. is his own uh, his own cartel, basically. Uh, and, and they are functioning right now pre-rebellion. Yep. So that's where we're left off there. Uh, for a moment, just a uh, quick – you know, sort of summary of the other Maul comic series that actually takes place before Phantom Menace and is just sort of a Maul that's ready to, like, ready to unleash himself on the Jedi, but Sidious is holding him back and he's just killing whoever he can. He finds out about a Padawan who's going to be sold on the black market uh, and he wants to go, you know, get her and kill her. Uh, and then we also have some bounty hunters that are working with him. Cad Bane and Aura Singh are two of them. Uh, so there's some... It, it's, some it's familiar a little bit more, faces. Yeah, some yeah. familiar faces. It's a little bit one note. It's not a, not the greatest story, but it is still... In, it's interesting enough if you if you're if you're fascinated enough by Maul and want to like know a little bit more about the character that is some a place to go. Uh, but it's super emo <laughs> is is the best description you've gave it. I think. Yeah, think. it's a very emo story. The way they the way they portray him, he is just the rage. way they write it. Yeah, and yeah. it's a lot of internal dialogue. Yeah, that is written. There's not a lot of dialogue actually happening until you get to like. The third episode, right? Of, of, like the first of a five two, issue series. Of, yeah, the first two, two and a half issues of the series is just Maul talking to himself, and, yeah. and moping and like being angry, and, right? And, and like setting the stage, yeah. yeah. And it's like, uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> I get it, I get it, you know. Now, so now we have some space with, you know, obviously Maul has his criminal empire, Crimson Dawn. We'll see how that plays out in future movies if it does. But where it eventually will lead is uh, the next time we see Maul is, uh, well, he doesn't have an empire at all. He doesn't have a cartel or anything. Right. He's a lonely old man who's stuck on Malachor, this old planet that has a Sith artifact, uh, a Sith temple and holocron. Um and he's been wandering. His play, his his ship has crashed there. And he comes across a young Ezra Bridger, Kanan Jarrus, um, and of course Ahsoka Tano. And they also fight it out with Vader on that planet. Yep. Uh, In one of the greatest stories uh, of that entire series. Absolutely. But it does bring Maul back into the series. This a little bit more of a manipulative guy who's just screwed over by the entire world. Uh, both his master, all his master and his family are gone. He is just see, he's seething, but he's a little he's a little bit more cerebral than maybe he's ever been before. Um, and although he he is he is a little, you get to see him uh, exercise a little. Oh, he bit can still go. He can still yeah. fight. He can still fight for sure. And he's trying to, you know, obviously we we get to see him work with Ezra Bridger. He kind of tries to make him his apprentice. Mm -hmm. uh, we get uh, a chance for him to get access to this holocron, and he goes off to to basically chase after Obi Wan Kenobi on some on... damn fool's errand. <laughs> Uh, on uh, on Tatooine, uh, where we see an elderly Obi Wan and elderly, uh, um, you know, obviously Darth Maul, both still, you know, they they can they handle can their still lightsabers. Go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, not quite, uh, not quite over the hill. Yeah, Obi Wan. But we're not going to see any acrobatics in this because if you haven't seen already, uh, Darth Maul does meet his end on Tatooine yeah. against Obi Wan Kenobi. So Obi Wan had the high ground. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but in one of the most, um, if you ask me, one of the most amazing fights ever that is not spectacular, that is maybe three moves, essentially, but it is th 
three very interesting moves. Very, very samurai influenced. Very symbolic. Yes. Too. And also ends with a very, like, a fascinating and almost tender moment. Between Be- the two of them. Yeah, because you see that, you know, because ulti- like, ultimately, as, as much as he hates Obi-Wan, for good reason, <laughs> you know. Um, he did cut him in half. Get, right. <laughs> he, do- he, did- he did also want the downfall of the Empire and Sidious and everything that, that he's created. So th- there's sort of a tender moment that's shared between them. It's totally worth watching that, uh, uh, that episode as well. But, um, man... Maul has come a long way from a guy who really is probably is on par with Boba Fett, like cool looking, but not so great. Has a real quick exit. Yes, exactly. So uh, maybe there's hope for Boba Fett fans out there, or Captain Phasma. <laughs> Your Captain Phasma fans out there as well. Uh, but man, it it is cool to see the transformation this character has gone through. And yes, I mean, they had to jump through some major hoops to bring him back from the dead, but I, I would say it's really worth it to, to see that path. Let me ask you this. Do you think <clears throat> there is a more developed villain in the Star Wars universe than Maul? Uh, I don't know if I'd... S- uh, you know what? After Clone Wars, Sidious... You know what, Sidious and Vader still, I think, are more. Because, only because we get a good amount of time with Anakin, uh, especially in the Clone Wars series, to really kind of delve into yeah. his frustrations with the Jedi. Uh, and, and now with the comic series, like, we've got two ongoing comic series for Vader right. that have really gone That's into true. depth. Yeah. So, yes, Maul is, has gotten more developed. And sure, he's a, maybe he's a more developed in movie history villain, you know, it, maybe compared to some other villains in movie history, but uh, now with the extended universe, obviously. But uh, I, I, I wouldn't say he's the most. Right. Yeah. No, I would agree with that, but I yeah. do you think... But I he, think he has a more interesting turn. I think he has yeah. a more interesting arc and a more interesting story than Sidious. Yeah. Uh, well, Sidious <laughs> has always been sort of that one-dimensional, like, force of evil yeah. type of villain. So, it... I don't know if I want a developed Sidious as much as no Sidious is who Sidious is. Yeah, like, like that, he that's should what just. He does. I don't need to find out that you know his some like his mom's name Martha. She, she got <laughs> killed, and that's when he turned to the dark side. You know, like I don't I don't need that. You know, why did you say that name? <laughs> why did you say that name? Uh, I Martha agree. Palpatine. <laughs> Martha Martha Papa Palpatine. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, he is what he is, uh, and he's great. You're right, but I don't. I don't want. Honestly, I don't want any more of what than than what we have. Yeah, for Palpatine. I mean, if they fill in some more spaces with like like, th- there's cool. St- it's not that they don't need to do more Palpatine. I don't need a Palpatine focus story. I like him existing with Maul. Like, if you do more Maul stories, great. The, there's a chance to have him manipulating and yeah, screwing. As you do as, more Vader stories, goes. like because that's where and that's where he's gotten to shine is as they do more Vader stories, you get to see some uh, like he's badass dark. Palpatine. He's really dark. And like just seeing like the the Palpatine in so we're in the second Marvel Darth Vader series, but the yeah. first one you know obviously picks up after A New Hope. And there's like there's a point where he is like where he he has new candidates for his new apprentice. Yeah. And Vader has to fight it out with those guys, you know. <laughs> like he earn his place yeah. at the table, yeah. And you also find out like you see Vader figure out uh that 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 Palpatine lied to him about Padme's death. Yeah. When he finds out he has a son yeah. uh, who Boba Fett is able to find that out for him. Right. You know, it's it, so get like that, that dynamic I think there is something to it and I think there is space for more of that especially if you want to color in some of those lines um you know between Empire and Return of the Jedi especially I think there's room for some of that yeah. um but and I mean if you choose to revisit the Clone Wars uh in in any way I think there there's definitely more of that there, you know. Uh, but outside of that, like, I mean, I I don't well, I don't need I, his I origin like, story. Like, I think like a like a comparable villain that we can compare Maul to would be an Asajj Ventress. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Okay. I think so. I think he's now at Asajj Ventress yes. point. Before he was below Asajj. Oh, for sure. You know, right? Because before he was at Boba Fett level, like cool <laughs> right. looking. Oh, 
but you know, Gotta like, go. and Grievous is sort of in that, still in that same spot. You know, yeah. well, Grievous is a little bit better of a spot because of the Clone Wars, but they're still he's not I, great. Yeah, I would like to see them color in some more for Grievous. Yeah, I, I, I wish we had a chance to see who Grievous was before mm-hmm. the Clone Wars mm-hmm. and how he was manipulated, maybe into, into becoming. becoming the monster that he is. Yeah, you know, because he was always supposed to be sort of this like. Um, foreshadowing for Vader, the half right. machine, half yeah. man, full of hate type of thing. Yeah. And of course, he has a cough while Vader has a breathing a breathing issue. <laughs> it was a little it was too. A it was a little too specific, George. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little on the nose. Although it was cool how they explained that in the Tarkovsky yeah. uh, series with, with, with like ma- mace with mace crushing his lungs. Yeah. So. But yeah, that being said, uh, there could be a little bit. There could be some more cool stuff done with Grievous. I think so. I'd like to see Grievous and F- Boba Fett get that treatment. Jango Fett, I think, could also get that treatment. He get too. a little bit more, you know, because. Uh, to be honest, I think right now Jango Fett is actually cooler than Boba, if you ask me. That's a hot take, I know. but Well, we have yeah. we have a little bit more to look at. We have a little yeah. bit more of his work to look at. I mean, we got a Jango, like, l- let me put it this way. Jango's so badass, he hires another bounty hunter to do his bounty. <laughs> <laughs> he's either a badass or bad at his job. He's, or he's a great delegator. <laughs> <laughs> he shouldn't have been a bounty hunter. He should have been middle management somewhere. <laughs> he should have been an accountant. Uh yeah I I agree I he there there there's a lot of characters that that we can find out a lot more about and I yeah. hope we do find out a lot more about yeah I, I don't yeah, need I, movies I, for them but, I, yeah. I, yeah, exactly like a, an hour and a half spectacle blockbuster movie doesn't seem to be the right place to uh, go into depth for some of these characters yeah unless uh, yeah and and you don't necessarily, here's my hope with Maul that he's an ancillary character that we get some we get to see like i will i would like to see him in the flesh again on the big screen uh in like a scum and villainy like as the head of crimson dawn and we maybe see Did him. they use Ray Park again? I don't know because if if Didn't it is quite look like cuz he looked right? a little tubby. I think that's why they even had him like pull the lightsaber it was like to confirm, "Hey, this is not another Zabrak who looks like him. This is <laughs> This is the same Darth Maul. the same Darth Maul." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure. Like I looked at him and I was like cuz it looked like he had gained some weight, which and would make sense. I mean, Ray Park's an older he's older now. He is, but he is very fit. Like I I saw footage of him at a con recently. That's not I don't think that was Ray Park. I'd be curious. Yeah, I'd be like, it feels like it should like, be, right? Like you get, you do like, he's widened out. He's not Has twenty. He? He's okay. not twenty yeah, years that's old. Fair. Yeah, that's fair. He's, he's a broader that's right. guy. That is a long time ago. Yeah. Jeez, it's almost twenty years ago that yeah. Phantom Menace came out. Yeah. Dear God. Yeah. So I, it, I think it very well could be. I wonder if they let him do his own lines though. <laughs> 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 that's the big question. This is what I got. We, we need, need to, to look up the research. credits. Yeah. We need to do some research on this and see if they if they let Ray Park finally have some lines. <laughs> right. <laughs> or if Peter Serafinowicz. <laughs> if they brought some friend with back. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's like in between shots of of the tech, right? <laughs> Let him do those lines. Yeah, I mean he only had like three lines in this one too. So that's true. That's it's not true. Not that big a deal, right? So, well, let us know what you think of Maul. Do you think they're? Do you like what they've done with Maul as a character? Do you think there are any uh, characters who are primed for a redemption of sorts to to get some cool story, not necessarily to be redeemed thematically, but to to to, to get some better use, let's say, to get some yeah. better mileage out of them? And how do you want to see it? Do you want yeah. it in a comic book? Do you want it in a book book? Do you, do you want, want it in a movie? movie? Do you yeah. want them featured as the main character in that? <clears throat> do movie? you want or a an grievous ancillary? movie? Ugh. General <laughs> grievous movie. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe. I, I'm Probably okay not. That one. I mean, I, I kind of because like he's got all those lightsabers. I kind of want to see him kill Jedi. Oh, that you know what? That is sort of an interesting. Like it. You know what? That would be a really cool horror movie. Yeah. Like a war combined with a horror movie. Yeah. Like to have like uh like just battalions of troopers led by Jedi like kind of be hunted on a planet by Grievous. Just, yeah, like Predator style. Yeah. Just. Yeah, that, that would, would be, be kind of f- neat. That would be cool. It'd be kind of neat. I kind of like that. He just takes sabers left and right. Right. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd watch that. Yeah. Ugh, that's an interesting. Uh, that's that's an a interesting good pitch. Yeah, that's yeah. a good pitch. The predator pitch. Yeah. It's yeah. a good idea. 
Yeah, because that'd be oh. Anyway, <laughs> let us know what you think of uh, of the possibilities in the Star Wars universe because there are lots of movies on the way, but there's lots of TV, comics, and books also on the way as well. So let us know what you think. You can uh, get in touch with us on at certainpov.com. All our social media is there. You can get in touch with us. You can also comment on our website, certainpov.com. Comment on the post for this episode again, certainpov.com. And until next time, stay scruffy, my nerf herders.